on this episode of Peak. The Green Children of Woolpit. The village of Woolpit lies in the English countryside in the county of Suffolk in East Anglia. Its name was mentioned in records dating back to the 10th century, though then it was recorded in Old English as Wolfpitta, named for the pits dug outside the village for the purpose of trapping wolves and protecting the citizens and livestock. During the Middle Ages, Woolpit was situated in one of the most densely populated regions in rural England. It was during this period that a peculiar incident allegedly occurred that would have historians and conspiracy theorists puzzling over Woolpit for centuries. In the middle of the 12th century, on a late summer day, reapers were toiling in the fields outside of Woolpit, harvesting their crops. Workers near the pits took a break from their labors and looked up to discover two strange children, a girl and a boy, looking fearful and bewildered. The children had skin of a greenish hue and wore clothes of a strange color and unfamiliar material. Apart from their tinged skin and odd clothing, the children were otherwise normal in their appearance. When spoken to, the girl and boy began to talk in a language unfamiliar to their discoverers. The children were taken in by villagers, who deduced that they were siblings. They tried to feed the frightened children, but when presented with bread, the two burst into tears. For several days, the children refused every scrap of food their caregivers presented to them, until one day, when they came upon some raw broad beans and gobbled them down ravenously. The story of the green children was reported by two independent sources at that time, William of Newborough and Ralph of Cogshall. William of Newborough was a priest, specifically an Augustinian canon, based in the Newborough Priory in Yorkshire. Like many religious men in the Middle Ages, he was also a historian and author. Because of his distance from Woolpit, William was not acquainted with those involved, but was convinced by the reports of a number of trustworthy sources, quote-unquote. He wrote of the children in his book, Historia Rerum Anglicarum, History of English Affairs, in 1189. Ralph of Cogshill was also a priest, serving as the abbot of a Cistercian monastery in Cogshill, a town located 30 miles from Woolpit. Ralph wrote about the children in his own English history book, The Chronicum Anglicanum, The English Chronicle, in 1220. Because he lived in a neighboring county, Ralph knew many of the villagers involved, and even spoke often with Sir Richard de Calm, the man who was said to have taken the children into his manor and overseen their care. In de Calm's home, the children subsisted on the raw beans for several weeks until they could be coaxed into eating a more balanced diet. In time, the children's green skin faded and permanently took on a normal human tone. Sadly, a fine new home and hearty meals weren't enough to improve the spirits of the young boy. His melancholy developed into illness and he died, shortly after he and his sister were baptized. The girl, the older of the two children, was sound in health and spirit, and she soon learned English. According to Ralph of Cogshall, Once the girl learned English, she claimed that she and her brother had come from a land of night, where the only source of light was twilight. Despite the dark, everyone and everything in the land was green. In William of Newborough's account, the girl had called her home St. Martin's Land. She said that from her home, a bright land could be seen across a great river. She could not explain how she and her brother had gotten to Woolpit. The two had been herding cattle for their father, she said when they heard bells, assumed to be those of the Bree St. Edmund's Abbey nearby. Ralph's version describes the children following the cattle into a long, dark cave and then emerging from a wolf pit. Bright sunshine was unknown to them, and they were blinded and bewildered. The disoriented children couldn't find the cave again and were soon discovered by farm laborers. Ralph's writings say that the girl was hired as a servant of Sir Richard's and was employed for many years in his household. He writes that many of the other servants found her behavior to be wanton and imprudent. According to William, the young woman eventually married a man from a nearby town. Nothing more is known of the girl. So, could the story of the green children be true? Or is it merely folklore passed off as history by bored yet creative priests? 
Here are a few theories. Theory one, the children are extraterrestrials. Ah, aliens, the knee-jerk theory whenever something jinky is going on. But it isn't just present-day UFO hunters who espouse this theory. Oxford University scholar Robert Burton threw down this explanation for the green kids in his book, The Anatomy of Melancholy, published in 1621. He said, the children fell from heaven. Theory two, the children were Flemish immigrants. In the 12th century, Flanders, an area of Belgium, had become gravely overpopulated. To make matters worse, floods had repeatedly devastated the region. Many Flemings, that is, people from Flanders who are referred to as Flemish people or Flemings, many Flemings immigrated to eastern England. At first, the country welcomed the immigrants, but soon their number became so great that English citizens became resentful. As a result, King Henry II persecuted the Flemish, forcing them to move to designated areas and wiping some out entirely. It is possible that the children's parents could have been killed by King Henry's ethnic cleansing. Perhaps their father had gotten warning of the impending slaughter and sent his children away on the pretense of tending their cows. Or they could simply have gotten lost tending the roaming livestock, as young children could easily do. If the green children were the first Flemish people the Woolpit villagers had ever seen, it's possible that they would have been weirded out by their language and the material of their clothing. The Flemish are known for their skilled weaving techniques. Perhaps the children wore clothing of an unfamiliar weave. And having come from Flanders, on the other side of the North Sea, it's possible that a particular dye that was available to the Flemish wasn't in use in Woolpit or surrounding areas, making the clothing color unusual to them. What about the green skin, though? Some theorists speculate that the children were suffering from the green sickness, or chlorosis. In medicine, this malady is called hypochromic anemia. It's a form of anemia in which the victim's red blood cells are paler than normal, often due to iron deficiency. In some, this condition can produce a greenish tinge in the skin. If the children had been subsisting on beans alone, they would likely have been terribly malnourished, with a definite iron deficiency. The girl's mention of St. Martin's Land could be a reference to Fornham St. Martin, a village 16 kilometers from Woolpit. Or it could have been a village in Flanders. St. Martin of Tours was and is a popular saint in Western Europe. St. Martin's Day has been celebrated there since the late 4th century. To this day, children in parts of Flanders receive gifts from St. Martin on November 11th, rather than from good old St. Nick in December. Another connection is the great river the girl mentions. If she had traveled across the Strait of Dover from Flanders to England, the ocean might have seemed like a vast river to her. These are compelling arguments. However, this theory has one serious flaw. Although Woolpit was a small farming village, it was situated in one of the most populous areas of medieval England. Wouldn't some of the villagers, especially the knight who took them in, Sir Richard de Calne, have been somewhat familiar with Flemings? Especially given that so many of them had immigrated to eastern England. Theory 3. This could be a folktale that may have been based on real events. The Babes in the Wood folktale was first published in Norwich in 1595. It is set in Norfolk during the Middle Ages and tells the story of an earl who was an uncle and guardian of two young children, a girl and a boy. To get his hands on their lands and fortune, the earl hires men to take the children into the woods and kill them. The men cannot bring themselves to perform the deed and instead abandon the children in the woods. And in a wonderfully happy Disney ending, the children die of starvation and exposure. As is the nature of folklore, different areas all have their own variation of the story, and in Woolpit's version, the children's uncle has poisoned them with arsenic and left them to die in the Woolpit wood. Could the children have survived, turned green from the poison, and stumbled into Woolpit? Since the folktale was first committed to paper in 1595, it's impossible to know if the folktale itself was inspired by actual events or by the story written by William of Newborough. Another issue with this theory is the arsenic poisoning. Arsenic would explain the children's disorientation and their desire not to eat, but arsenic isn't well known for turning victims' skin green. Long-term poisoning can cause skin discoloration, darkening, and redness, but there's no mention anywhere of green green. 
The green arsenic connection here makes me a little suspicious of the story being much, much younger than it seems. In 1775, the pigment copper arsenate was produced by Carl Wilhelm Scheele. It was the copper in the pigment that made it green. It was the arsenic in the pigment that made it deadly. For an interesting and morbid story, I definitely recommend Googling Sheila's Green. It's probably what killed Napoleon. So the color green wasn't associated with arsenic until this point in history. That's what makes me suspicious. Theory four, this story is a total fairy tale. Several elements in the green children's story can be found in English folklore, which blends Celtic, Germanic, and Christian influences. The green man, a human-like creature adorned with leaves, vines, and flowers, appears in depictions dating back to before the Roman Empire. Although his image appears in many cultures, he's commonly associated with Celtic society, whose use of his image conveys nature, growth, and rebirth. With the children being green and coming from a strange world of perpetual twilight, it's not a big leap to assume they are fairies or other magical creatures. Their arrival, acceptance into the town, and baptism may represent the transition of people moving from old beliefs and traditions into a Christian life. Surprisingly, the beans are also an important element. The Roman tradition of giving beans or peas to the spirits of the dead was adopted by Britons and was widely practiced in medieval England. The story of the children only eating beans, associated with death, and upon being given bread, perhaps meaning the Eucharist, their health and color is restored, implying that being baptized and accepted into this Christian village brought them back from an eternity of damnation. Remember, a priest first wrote this story and then another priest wrote it again. Ralph of Cogshill also mentions that when the girl grew up, she was viewed as wanton and imprudent. That's exactly what you'd expect from a fairy, right? And here's the clincher. William of Newborough wrote a large number of stories about medieval revenants. Revenants are people who return as spirits after death. In other words, ghosts and other creepy things. Some of William's stories contained vampiric beings and zombie-like creatures. So... Is it a stretch that this guy could be making up stories about little green fairy kids? For more information on Woolpit, Medieval England, and green children, view my sources below. Thanks for watching Peek. If I piqued your interest, kindly give me a thumbs up or subscribe to this channel to further cure your curiosity.